Hi, this is Jerry here with another axe video. I'm going to do a put a haft on this handle on this uh, witherel right here. This is a brand new witherel, but witherel went out of business 1920s. Still has the label. I'm going to remove this label. Uh, normally I like to keep the historical accuracy and, and uh, intact, but this one, it, all these brown spots and it's faded so bad, it's just unsightly and it's got this blue paint underneath. So I'm going to remove this. This was never put on a handle. This side was left natural. See the forging? color there and then it was polished on the bit. It's actually quite sharp still after almost a hundred years. Look at that pole. Some Maine, Oakland, Maine it was made. Two and three quarters pounds. Kind of an unusual uh, weight. I'm going to put a 28 inch handle on it. I, I got this other project that I'm going to do later. This is a uh, a Collins Legitimus Michigan pattern. You can see the difference in the three and a half pounder here and this two and three quarter pounder. Quite a bit uh, more pull here on this uh, larger axe. It's longer. The main axe has always looked sort of blocky to me. This is an Indian fire handle. I've had it in storage for a long time. It was cut a little bit off center here, so we'll have to deal with that because I, I have to cut it down another inch or so to get the bottom of the axe um, down to this uh, shoulder within a half inch or so of the shoulder. So I'll have to cut this down and try to get it more into the center. But we'll deal with that. What I usually use is this, uh, just a palm sander. They're quite loud. Uh, I'll just keep trying to fit it as I sand. Uh, I wear ear, ear protection, but I won't bore you with the actual sanding, but... That's all I do. So, I'll uh, check in with you later. Okay, you can see where... Uh, up here, it, this is where I have to concentrate my sanding is, is up here. Plenty of gap here. I don't want to take too much off back here. So I have to sand more here. Got to go down quite a bit more. So I just, uh, just tr keep trying to fit it with this plastic uh, mallet. Plastic or wood you want to use. Still concerned about the off-center slot here, but uh, we'll deal with that when we get to it. I want to get the axe down to here, mostly taking off wood right in here, right in here. I'm about ready to wedge this. It's not perfect. I've got a large gap in the back here and I didn't sand any off the back here or in the front it just fits like that uh, sanded the sides down I got a good tight fit all around except right in the back there and you can see it's uh, kind of an uneven gap you know it is an old axe not didn't have uh, modern manufacturing methods then so I'm going to wedge it like it is, see how it, how it works. Always uh, seems to never go as planned, but uh, I think it'll work okay. We'll see. Ready to wedge though. Next thing I do is get the wedge. I'm going to put some uh, boiled linseed oil on the wedge before I drive it in there. I might cut off some of this first, I think. Um, 
I, I learned that from uh, Bushcraft USA, a lot of the guys on there. Um, I use boiled linseed oil on the wedge before they put it in to make it slide in easier and, and hold it. So we'll see how that works. I have it done. I took the label off. You could see I was getting some rust specks in there. That was making that label discolored, which is what I thought. Um, it's looking pretty nice. It's uh, well balanced. 28 inch handle on a uh, two and three quarter pound axe. I don't believe I've had this combo before. It's a real nice feeling. But I'm only going to give myself a B minus on this job at best. I got quite a gap in the back there. I don't know if I can get that. Yeah, see that? I don't know what happened. I don't know if the eye's overly large. I got it well fitted all around. But I was running out of shoulder here, fairly close to the end, and still a gap. Got it wedged tightly with that off-center kerf, or a slot there in the handle. Could have been better. I'm going to give it a try like it is. Um, but I got to play with it first. I'm not going to chop with it right away. It's just really nice. But I'll chop with it eventually, and if I have to rehandle it, I will. But uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Yesterday, when I was working on that axe, uh, it's 50s Fahrenheit. And this is today, more typical weather, 20 uh, Fahrenheit. It's at minus minus six, I guess, Celsius. Uh, windy. Supposed to be a foot of snow on the higher terrain near the lake. So I'm moving inside, but I decided to do uh, something else to those gaps. I had this uh, cherry board that was splitting right down the center. So I uh, split off some small pieces I'm going to carve down and try to make shims and put in to that gap. I'm going to glue glue one side towards the handle I'm going to drive these down as far down in that gap as I can. Um, I used this um, one of my next projects here. I bought this on eBay. Uh, nobody bid on it. An embossed axe. It's uh, not the most collectible embossing. Van Camp hardware from Indianapolis. But anytime you have an embossed axe, you get the quality old North American from the old age of X making. I don't know how I'm going to deal with that because I didn't really buy this hatchet or a small axe for the head necessarily, but this handle is a octagon. You see how it segues from octagon into a oval at the bottom here. Just a a nice old handle that uh, you just can't get anymore. It's a very long handle for a cat to look good for a trapper or a hunter. It's just a, a one pound lightweight cat that has on a long, probably 18, 19 inch handle. So I'm going to try to uh, fix this up but save the handle. I got some gouges to uh, sand out and uh, those nails and a metal wedge. It needs tightening. But I don't know how to do it yet, but we're going to figure it out and, and save this handle. But that's uh, another project. First I got to get this one done. So anyway, that's uh, next on the agenda for that act. I've got it done. You can see I added some wood here in the gap. It's not the best solution, but the best one I have with the brains that I got. If it does loosen, I can always put a new handle on. I had too much work into it. A little bit in there I added too. I got them in there about a half inch on both sides. Added glue towards the handle side. So I think it came out pretty nice. 28 inch handle. Two and three quarters pounds. 
you can see the uh, lamination line right there between the harder steel on the bit and the softer steel earlier in the 20th century that's how they made axes actually two kinds of steel in this axe pristine pole I lost some paint when I took that rust off but I had to do it. I'm glad I took that label off now. All I have to do is sharpen it. I use 60 grit sandpaper on the handle. I've got two coats of boiled linseed oil on it. You see a little bit of uh, heartwood on the end here. But I think it's done. This one's going into the inner sanctum of my axis. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.